All right, practice problem number three associated with sample problem D. A pelican flying along a horizontal path drops a fish from a height of 5.4 meters. The fish travels 8.0 meters horizontally before it hits the water below. What is the pelican's speed? Right, so let's take stock of uh, the things that we know. We know that we're being asked to solve the, for the pelican's speed. Now, the pelican was flying along a horizontal path, which means that there is velocity in the y direction? No, no velocity in the y direction. So we're actually going to be solving for an initial velocity, which actually is velocity only in the x direction, right? So we have our coordinate system, right? only traveling in the horizontal direction. So that initial velocity is going to be the same as velocity in the x direction. Uh, what else are we given? Uh, we know that we have a delta x of 8.0 meters. We have a, let's see, do I have enough room? Um, we have a delta y of 5.4 meters, but Remember, the, the fish is dropping from the pelican, so it's dropping down, right? Acceleration due to gravity is going down. And so again, in the, 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 the down y direction is a negative direction, so I have to represent that with a negative sign. So delta y is negative 5.4 meters. So let's draw our situation so that we can, we can picture it. Um, so we have you know, a pelican traveling in this, this x direction. Um, and then there is a, a kind of a, a dropping incident. Where this fish that actually does have an initial x velocity, but no initial y velocity, is going to be traveling in a hyperbolic path. Right? So we know that there's going to be an acceleration in the y direction that is going down. Okay? Uh, and so that acceleration is going to be equal to the force of gravity, but in the negative direction, right? Because it's the downward y direction. And so that ends up being negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So we, we know that, again, we've already written down the delta x. Okay, that's this displacement. Delta x is equal to 8.0 meters. And the delta y, which is this displacement, is negative 5.4 meters. So we're going to be using one of the kinematic equations. We're going to use uh, the kinematic equation that relates a displacement to a, uh, an initial velocity multiplied by time plus 1 half acceleration delta t squared now here's the thing. The pelican was traveling uh, only in the horizontal direction, not going up or down in the y direction at all. And so the, at a constant speed, that's what we have to assume here. And so that means that if there's a constant speed, meaning there's no change in velocity, no change in velocity, it means numerically the acceleration is zero. That allows us to get rid of the entire second part of that equation. Left, So we're left with Delta x is equal to initial velocity, which is the same thing as velocity in the x direction, because remember the pelican's traveling horizontally, uh, multiplied by the time that the fish is, again, in free fall. Now we're being asked to solve for the pelican's speed, right? so this is the initial velocity, and so we can actually uh, divide both sides by delta t, and we can solve for that it was an expression that looks like this. Now before I explain to you why we want this expression to look like this, let's consider the displacement in the y direction. So displacement in the y direction, we have the initial velocity multiplied by the time plus one half acceleration delta t squared. Now there is no initial velocity in the y direction. So that means that for this velocity here, in the y direction specifically, 
the numerical value for initial velocity is zero. So I can get rid of that part of the equation. So that means that I have a delta y being equal to one half acceleration times time squared. Now the reason that this is so important is that if I can solve for time, I can plug that time in for this delta t. And because I already have a delta x, right? I already have a delta x, I'll be able to solve for my initial velocity. But I have to solve for uh, I have to solve for t first. Well, first thing I'll do, multiply both sides by two. Right, that'll get rid of the half. Then I'll divide both sides by a. Get rid of acceleration on that side. Now don't forget this bad boy is squared over here. So I'm going to have to square root both sides to get rid of the square. And so I'll end up with an expression solving for time that looks like this. So even though the question hasn't given me a value, like a numerical value for delta t for time, right, the time that the fish was in, uh, in free fall, I can use a rearranged version of the kinematic equation to actually solve for delta t using the values that the question has given me. The reason that that's very, very nice is because I can take this expression for delta t and actually plug it in for this delta t. Now I'll have a value for delta t, even though the question didn't give me a numerical value for delta t, I'll be able to plug in values there and there, right? Delta x and delta t will, all, will both have values, and I'll be able to divide those out and solve for initial velocity, which is velocity in the x direction. <clears throat> so uh, let's get to it. So I'm going to solve for that initial velocity is equal to delta x divided by delta t. So we have delta x divided by 2 delta y divided by the acceleration. Don't forget that that's square rooted. And just to help myself with calculator work, I'm actually going to uh, rearrange this a little bit. because In my opinion, it ends up being easier. You do not have to do this at all. You can actually plug these three values in here, right? Because we have a value for delta x, we have a value for delta y, we have a value for a. So you can just plug this stuff in your calculator right now and uh, solve for that initial velocity. But I'm a little bit nervous when it comes to my calculator work, so I'm going to rearrange this to make it a little bit easier on myself. And I'm going to use that uh, maths rule uh, that states that if I am dividing this delta x by a fraction, right, we have a numerator, denominator, I'm dividing by a fraction, it would actually be the exact same value if I were to multiply it by the inverse of that fraction. So what I'll do here is I'll actually turn this all upside down. So I've got to be so rooted though. And that's going to be mul now multiplied by delta x. Now hopefully you'll see what I mean here. When I go to plug in these values, it's going to be a little bit easier on my calculator skills. Uh, what was my delta y? Negative 5.4 meters. And remember this is square rooted. Don't forget that. That'll mess you up. I need to multiply by my x value, which was what? 8.0 meters. And now I'm ready to calculate. So. Uh, let's see, looking at the question, looks like uh, I only have two significant figures on uh, anything that's been given me, so my answer needs to be in significant, uh, two significant figures. Given what the calculator is telling me right now, I'd go with 7.6 meters per second. 